Ian Scott here. Well, hopefully part one of the video was uh, easy enough to follow. Uh, so now here's the second part on how to make your uh, traction control adjust knob using a uh, common pole 12 position rotary switch. So I hope you find this helpful. And you can buy the TC adjust switch and it's, it's about a hundred odd dollars or more. Um, or you can make your own for about uh, five dollars. On the fuel harness there's a cable coming out with a three pin connector on the end. There's an orange wire, a brown wire and the a orange wire. is a um, five volt uh, power supply. The brown is an earth or, or the, you know, the ground point and the blue is the signal that comes back from your adjustment switch comes back into the controller. Uh, now the signal that comes back is just an analog signal, it's just a, a, a voltage. So what we have to do is make our, our own um, uh, stepped voltage divider switch or maybe you want to call it a stepped potentiometer. What I've done here is I've got three wires. Uh, I've got a red which will um, connect to the orange I've got a blue that will connect to the blue and I've got a green that will connect to the brown. So my red and green are, you know, the 5 volt power supply is uh, the returning voltage signal. I've done the same thing. Um, I've run these along the left hand side of the frame down to the front. Now you can order these uh, plugs on eBay or AliExpress. They're about 5 or $6 um, for two or three of them. Uh, I've got some coming but in the meantime I'm just going to solder these wires onto here just solder them on uh, as a temporary arrangement so here's my three soldered connections just the temporary so just take note that the cables I've run down to the front so that's the yellow one for the uh, traction control light I actually wrapped them in um, insulation tape so I made a my own little harness and ran that all the way through. So I've now insulated those. So here's the other end of my cable with the wires there ready to be. It's back into the classroom again. I'll just explain a voltage divider for you because that's what we're going to make. But a voltage divider is a very common thing used in electronics. A diagram of a voltage divider is if you have two resistors like that connected together and you put a voltage on, you put a voltage across them, so you've got the positive and the negative. Now the positive side, the resistor closest to that is always called R1, and then the next one is called R2. Now if you were to tap the point in the middle there, the voltage out there is a function of these resistors, and that function is R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times the voltage and that is equal to V out so that's equal to that. Okay, now let's take this a step further. Say we've got six 100 ohm resistors in a line all connected together. So this is how we can make a stepped uh, voltage divider. So if you were to tap, um, tap it at this point here, to calculate the voltage out, remember it's a function of the resistance, so R1 is always the side on the positive um, voltage, and then R2 is the other side. Now resistors connected in series like that, it's just the total resistance is just the sum of them. The formula to calculate the voltage tapped out at that point is R2 over R1 plus R2. So that would be equal to, um, R2 would be 400, because you've got four 100 ohm resistors. So it's 400 divided by the sum of R1 and R2, which is 6 times 100, so it's 600 ohms. 
So the voltage here then, and we're saying we've got five volts coming in. Um, so that'll be times five volts. It's a uh, so it's 0 0.67 times 5, which is 3.33 volts. So by using what's called a rotary switch, we can create a stepped voltage divider. So you need to go down to your local electronics parts store and buy yourself a 12 position rotary switch with a single pole. So it's called a single pole 12 position rotary switch. So what that means is there's a single common point in the middle here and then the switching mechanism inside for each turn, you can hear it clicking, for each turn it's just switching from that common point to each terminal as it goes around. Now it's very important that it is 12 poles, what they call 12 poles on the switch because we need um, 11 100 ohm resistors all lined up in series. That's what the pizzazz unit needs to give you uh, a voltage, a variable voltage at each point. So what we're going to do with this rotary switch is we're going to make a stepped voltage divider with 11 uh, tapping points on it. So if you're viewing it from the front, so that represents the shaft that you turn, um, and the connections are on the back, so, but I'm viewing it from the front. Uh, we have the common pole, and then we have 12 Holes around the circumference of the rotary switch and each time you click the switch it just connects that common pole there to each one in turn so when you're fully anti-clockwise it'll be connected to this one when you turn it one click clockwise it'll connect to that one and that one and that one and so on so what we're going to do is we're going to put a 100 ohm resistor between each of the poles right around the circumference. So we put a resistor there and here. And we're going to make them 100 ohms. So all these are 100. And then we'll connect the positive power supply, the five, plus 5 volts. Uh, we'll, we'll connect to here. So that's plus 5 volts. And then on this side, that will be the earth, you know, the negative side. Now, remember the uh, voltage divider formula is R2 divided by R1 plus R2 uh, times the voltage coming in which is uh, 5 volts and that that will give you the uh, the voltage out at any one of these points so if we if we have the switch turned say 1 2 3 4 uh, clicks clockwise from the off position well, that means that common pole will be connected to that point there. Now, R1 is the resistance on this side of the tapping point because R1 is, is on the side, uh, on the positive side, and then R2 is on the negative side. So R1 would be um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it would be 700 ohms. And R2 would be 400 ohms. Yeah, I hope this isn't getting too complicated for everyone, but we need to go into a bit of detail here to get it right and so you understand what we're doing here. But I've put it all onto a spreadsheet and done all the calculations 
Um, the Bazaz uh, switch that you purchase for over $100 gives you 11 positions. Fully anti-clockwise, uh, it's off, so your traction control is turned off, which corresponds to zero volts. At minus five, um, that corresponds to 0.45 volts. So when the Bazaar's unit sees 0.45 volts, it must have a lookup table or something in the software that sees a minus five, so it will take five of all the numbers in your TC sensitivity map. So each click clockwise keeps adding a number. So you start off at off and then you go minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one and so on. And when you get to zero that means that uh, it corresponds to 2.73 volts and Bazaz sees that as no changes to the map in your system. When you go one click past the zero point, one click clockwise, that's a positive one which corresponds to 3.18 volts. So when it sees the 3.18 volts coming through, that tells it it's to add one to all your numbers in the TC map. You turn it another turn, that's positive two, which is 3.64 volts. So that's telling the Bazaz to add a number two to all your numbers in the TC sensitivity map. So basically you've got your neutral or your no change position there at zero and then you can go up to five um, on the positive side so you can increase all the numbers by up to five or you can decrease all the numbers by up to five. That's why we, we must have 11 resistors all the same and we're going to use 100 ohm, 11 resistors in series and we just create a voltage divider, a new voltage divider with every click on the switch. And I plotted it here and you can see it's just a, a linear relationship, it just gives you a straight line. So I've just completed soldering the 11 100 ohm resistors onto the rotary switch. So when the uh, shaft is turned fully anti-clockwise, the centre pole there is connected to that pin there, number one, and when it's turned fully clockwise, then the centre pin there is connected to this pole here, number 12. So this is where we put the connection, um, the 5 volt power connection. So the positive goes on this side, and the negative goes this on that will be the output, that will be the blue wire. So this is the dial I'll be using. Now the numbers on it aren't correct because they only go up to 10. Um, so I will probably paint this and renumber it. But this step is important. Um, what you need to do is turn your dial completely anti-clockwise. So it's on the minus 5 position. Then turn it clockwise 6 clicks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now that will be the 0 position. And you want to mount that on the top of your little panel that you're going to make. Um, now the switches here have a little locating dowel. So you need to drill two holes. You drill a 10 millimeter hole for this section here, and then you drill a three millimeter hole for that little dowel there. So you need to get that three millimeter locating hole in the right place so that when you mount this, the zero, at six turns from anti-clockwise, is at the top. I just took some measurements then and I need to uh, cut 19 millimetres off this shaft so that the um, dial is is uh, almost flush with the panel there. 
So what I'll do with this later is uh, I'll paint this black and then I'm going to file a small V in the top there uh, that aligns with the zero and paint that white so I can see it. So there's the completed uh, soldering on the back. The output wire in the middle there coming from the common pole. The 5 volt positive uh, goes onto the left side and the negative goes onto the right side. Now the moment of truth, we'll test this out. So just to show you that I'm not cheating, there's the USB cable uh, plugged into the pizzazz controller and it's going along there and I've got it plugged into my computer. Okay, let's test the map switch out first. So it's on map one and there's map two. So now we'll test the uh, famous um, stepped potentiometer. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, and off. So it's working exactly as it's supposed to. Go back the other way. Minus five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And now we can go plus one, two, three, four, and five. So it's working exactly as the uh, the one you can buy from uh, Bazaars for over $100 and this cost about five or six dollars maybe. So this is the standard Bazaars unit, a very small knob and a very small distance between the clicks so I just find it difficult to use when I'm wearing my road racing gloves. Here's my completed uh, DIY TC adjust switch. Uh, good distance between each click. There's the off position. It's minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, and zero. And I think that's going to be a lot easier to use. So it's all waterproofed by wrapping it with that self-amalgamating silicon tape. So that's all nice.